Hey folks, welcome back to Scatterbrain. Uh, if you're returning, thanks. And if you, this is the first time you've uh, seen anything that I've done, then um, thanks very much and uh, welcome aboard. Uh, today I'll be talking to Super Collector Jeff Trax. Uh, he is based in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and he collects so many things. Trading cards, action figures, VHS... Uh, all sorts. So we have a lot in common. We talk about how we find our things. We talk about uh, the different types of collecting, what we collected as a, in our childhoods. And uh, look, it's just a general uh, chit chat. So feel free to be a fly on the wall and uh, listen to our conversation here. And at the end, please stay tuned as there will be a giveaway. All right. See you on the other side. Thanks. <laughs> this is really cool, man. This is awesome, dude. I've never talked with anyone anyone further than, I don't know, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And you can hear me okay and you can see me okay? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. Clear, both loud and clear, man. Excellent, man. That's great. Well, it's so nice to finally, you know, like obviously I know your face, but put the face to the name and everything and... You've, Sounds, yeah, it's yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, and I can see the the infamous uh, collection room there behind you. So, oh yeah, got got to be in the nerd room. In fact, right now I'm propping the phone up with a stack of cards that I've uh, been working on out of a box. So <laughs> that is absolutely perfect, man. So what what, 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 what cards what cards have you been working on? Uh, um, I got uh, Wildstorm Gallery. That's a, oh that's a yeah. Awesome. Have you, do you have you seen this one? Uh, I haven't seen the actual cards, but I've seen the boxes going around. Oh yeah, it's they're uh, they're they're larger than normal, right? You know, like there's a yeah. standard card. And they're they're not even. Longer. Are they like a wide vision size, or are they even? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're they're each one's painted by a different artist. They're all from the Wildstorm series. I mean, I didn't read any of the comics way back when, but you know, it was like a six dollar box and i was like i I, mean, I just like reading about superheroes and villains you know even if i don't read the comics about them and but the art on these is just crazy cool so that's the best yeah. like that's what i've been loving buying recently is the um like you get all those comic images boxes so like the frazetta and the mobius and all those i mean for what you pay i mean i pay more because i have to get them over here but i mean for what you even for what i pay it's really cheap for the amount of really cool artwork that you get especially the frazetta stuff i mean it's so hard like to get like really good frazetta like images right. yeah I got that's this, the one uh, you know I, I finished this one and uh remember you uh we, we talked about when i posted it uh what last month about you know this card sticking together yeah this box this one and the uh the julie bell i just finished julie bell this morning <laughs> yeah oh, those my are, Lord. do they they were all stuck together I, I had to go on eBay and buy 15 of the cards because, you know, you open a whole box. Like, there were some cards I had nine of the exact same card, none of them usable. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so I had to go on eBay, pay more than the set is worth just to fill in the holes. <laughs> that probably has to do with the way that that card was printed on a sheet, possibly like why that one particular card was always stuck in that. But it's yeah. just, you, you don't even think about it. Just the same as the old vintage stuff, like the gum stains the back of the cards. It's like, all right, well, if you're like a diehard, like condition guy, then that card is no good. But the same with the, the same with the 90s stuff. I mean, they were all about the gloss, right? That was like, how glossy can we make these cards? We want them to make look like glass. And the, I guess the problem is, is eventually that gloss starts to break down. Well, let, let me show you this, right? So, I, uh, you know, I've been breaking boxes. This garbage can is half full of uh, just, you know, the packaging and stuff, right? <laughs> but every, every single special card, so the Julie Bell, each pack came with a tech chrome card. Yeah. Every single card looked like that. Oh, man. Immediately in the garbage. So the the chase set, the entire set is in the garbage here. And I mean, it's a cheap set. It's what ten bucks for yeah. you know the ten yeah. cards. So I just buy a separate. But I tell you, as I was opening, I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Every pack's got. Yep, every pack. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, like, I guess that was again. That was the that was the thing. The inserts were all just like the chrome, the prism. I mean, yep. I'm kind of worried because I'd love to get hold of boxes. Um, the boxes that I would love to get again are like the uh, the Evil Ernie and the Lady Death and those sort of cards, and they were all chrome. Like the entire right. set was chrome and the boxes, you know, they're up there. I mean, for me, the cost to me is about a hundred bucks for a box. For a box? Um, but 
well, you know, by the time I get it here and stuff, yeah, for sure. Oh, um, and, um, but I'm worried that like, if I get them here, that the half of the cards were going to be ruined. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, that's a, that's a heck of a chance to have to take. That's yeah. A hell of a gamble. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the stuff I have like, again, like with the old chipboard stuff that you see behind me, Ninja Turtles, Roger Rabbit, that sort of stuff. I mean, you know, those cars, they're pretty good. Besides the, besides the gum thing, besides the gum right. staining, which never bothered me. I mean, I, I buy them because that was what I collected in that, you know? Exactly. Um, and I always thought of the gum as like, you know, just, yeah, the gum stains on, I'm like, oh yeah, cool, man. Some, when, when I go through that, like uh, I just got that Star Wars set, uh, the blue border set, you know? Yeah. And you know, mine's worn. I mean, it's got wrinkles, all the corners around it, but for 25 bucks, I was like, I just want to have the set. I don't care. Yeah. Same with my Garbage Bell Kids Series 2. That's a that's a beater of a set, but it's complete, right? And uh, But I just love – I actually like it when I see the gum, you know, stain on there, and I'm yeah. like, dude, awesome. Some kid 30 years ago popped that gum off, ate it, and just, you know, threw this in a box or, uh, you know, um, uh, a binder somewhere. But yeah. some yeah. kid ate that gum 30 years ago. <laughs> I was saying, maybe you can tell me as well, like, was that gum – was that gum when was that even good gum back then or was no, it like crappy gum no, no, back it, then it, as well even back then it was hard as a rock it was you know there, there was at no point in time was it ever soft maybe when they first put it in the pack yeah it might have been soft but no it was always you know crap in fact just a second <laughs> Uh, about 15 years ago I, I got my hands on a box of garbage Bell, uh, garbage Bell kids series 12. And I saved all the gum. <laughs> That's and, uh, excellent. That's great. I'm not eating this crap, man. This uh, <laughs> we uh, we had that giveaway uh, on the cardboard a couple years ago. Remember yeah. that? And the guy who won, I sent him a piece of this gum with a, with a little note that says, "I dare you." And he chewed it up and spit it, and it was on, so he could oh, take a picture of it for us. Yeah. And it was just a just a slimy mass. There was oh. nothing even chewable there; just disintegrated in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's almost a cool piece of history in itself you know what would be great is one day running into like a garbage power kids artist like you know one of the original artists from back in the day and just getting him to autograph a couple of pieces of gum <laughs> oh, that would be awesome <laughs> yeah that, that was um one, one of my uh the cool things that uh you know richard parks had in some of his earlier uh series the like the early Oh, which ones were they? The Halloween series, his first couple. Right, he sure. did faux. He did faux gums. He did cards with fake gum on them. Yeah, that's a great so idea. He got a stick of gum. So I, I love those cards. I've got. I think I got a whole set of those because some had. One, I remember one stick of gum had a Band-Aid on it. One had a roach crawling on it and stuff. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Actually, I just brought him up. I was talking to another Tops artist uh, yesterday or the other day, uh, Lindsay uh, Grayling, and she. Uh, we were talking about Richard then. And, you know, just he's. Uh, you know, he's um, doing the perfect mix of sort of like old school, small publisher type of work, but he's still putting everything in him, the sketch cards, the autograph okay. cards, you know, the, the, um, the, also like the cutting the cards out of the box, you know, so, if, you know, you, if you want this extra little subset of cards, you have to literally cut them out of the box, you know, mystery science theater. He did that. So yes. yeah, just, he's doing just cut my... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, it just, he was, he's just doing that like, um, He's a small publisher, you know, like he still does a lot of things the old school way, you know, does a lot of it very hands on, you know, it's not all just mass factory stuff. Um, but he's still getting all the, you know, getting the stuff that people want. They want some autographs. They want the, the chase hits, you know, they want printing plates and, and whatever oh, yeah. else. I love yeah. Printing plates. Yeah. Printing plates. But I, the mystery science. I, uh, I got the first series when it came out, I did the Kickstarter and then I, um, uh, I didn't have money at the time for series two. So I was like, well, I got to pass up on this one. And then series three came along and I was like, I can't have series three without series two. So I missed out on that. And then I was watching, uh, what was I watching? I was watching an episode the other day and I said, or last week I was watching some MST3K. And I said, you know what? Let me just check eBay. And some seller was selling, an, he, he, he was one of the guys who bought a case of the boxes. Yeah. And so he broke up the sets and made the sets. 25 bucks and I got series three. I was like, yes, but yeah, like you said, with value. clipping out the box, yeah. just yesterday morning, I clipped out all the cards from the box and put it all together in order in uh, little sleeves and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I love that about Richard's stuff. And uh, do you know uh, Kurt, Kurt Kernsteiner from uh, Monster Wax? Oh, yes, yes. 
Yeah, I was just on the phone with him the other night. We were talking about the one that just ended the uh, the horrible, ugly monsters. Right. I had a question about it before I before this I is a, like like a Kickstarter thing, right? Yeah, the Kickstarter one. And um, here I'll show you right up here is my uh, this is my monster wax shelf right here. Wow, I've got just about everything. And down here is my RR Park shelf. Uh, this entire section under these here, it's everything Three Stooges. I got just about every single Three Stooges thing. And this is uh, all mystery science and other stuff. But what I loved about the the uh, the Monster Wax stuff, like the Spook Show card set came with an actual sick bag. So when you got scared, you could puke into the bag while you were reading the cards. That is great. <laughs> he, Kurt... I mean, he just has all these gimmicks and stuff. Like here's my, my Spook Show, um, what, my ticket to get into the Spook Show and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he um, uh, Kurt is really good with the the gimmicks, the you know, like the showmanship gimmicks of it too. He's gonna love having you, uh, you know, showing that off. He's gonna he's gonna really enjoy like, you know, for everyone to see like the the full collection. You've split it up into monster wax. You've split it up into you know Richard Parks and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, you just see even from the room. I mean, because you're not just a card guy, right? You you know, you have oh, v no, VHS, got, uh, cassettes, I'm everything. Here. I'm here. This is my DC superheroes right now. And uh, I got that. I build Gundam models. This is where I'm working right now on the other, uh, the other card boxes. I also collect VHS. For example, there you are, sir. There's the Christopher Walken you did uh, with my Christopher <laughs> Walken collection. Nice. Um, I got my Japanese slash Godzilla collection, my, my anime manga section. So yeah, my, uh, my room split up by genre. Um, and then like, you know, when I've got mo uh, a movie collection, I also like to put the cards that go with the movies and stuff. So like I've For got sure. an entire bookshelf of horror movies over there and it's horror action figures, horror trading cards, you know? So that's crazy. Yeah. I and used to be a lot. I remember back in college, my, uh, I, uh, uh, we had this toy store called KB toys yeah, and you could get um, they, oh you okay so three for ten bucks were action figures all the time so I we'd go in there me and my other nerdy buddies and we'd buy you know fifty dollars worth of action figures just to play with them yeah and uh, I lived in at uh, uh, the apartment I lived in in uh, in college at uh, Western Michigan I lived across the hall from a drug dealer and here was the deal uh, when he would throw parties I mean he had a party every weekend because you know everyone wanted to come and get their dope right. So he had so many people in his place and he had the keg and everything. He had the keg in the bathroom that the deal was I got into the party. I got free beer and whatnot. And we used my apartment for bathroom and overflow. And I can't tell you how many times we'd be sitting in there and guys, you know, couples would come in, guys and girls coming in and the guys would be like, holy shit, look at all this. Oh man, you got these Star Wars toys. Man, can I play with your Star Wars toys? And the girls would be like, <laughs> I'm going to see you losers later. And we could be a bunch of 20 something guys sitting there playing with star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, are you were like, so you were based in Michigan. Have you always been a Michigan guy? No, no, no. I'm from Florida. Originally I was born and raised uh, Florida, a little bit in Mississippi. But when I was in, I don't know, what was that? 12th grade, my dad retired from the Navy and we moved up here to live with family till he could find a job. And we ended up in a, Ended up in Marshall, which is near Battle Creek. And I went to school in Battle Creek in, um, in Kalamazoo for college. Mm -hmm. And then right out of college, I got a job teaching art for Ypsilanti, which is right next door to Detroit. And I've been here ever since. Well, oh, and now I know how to say it. I've been saying Ypsilanti, so it's just Ypsilanti. Uh, Ypsilanti, yes, yes, yes. Right. That, and, that's a common mistake. Right. And you're a primary school teacher, right? No, uh, uh, middle school. I do sixth through eighth. Now, I used to do, for years... When I first met you, I was uh, at elementary. I got bounced back and forth every five years or so, but I've been at middle school now for seven years. What ages is that? Because we don't call it middle school. So. Oh, uh, it's sixth, seventh, and eighth. That would be like uh, 12 through 14, 15. Oh, sure. So, I mean, those kids are uh, old enough to know sort of, you know, to get uh, – so they know what you're all about, you know, they get it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I get uh, my mouth has gotten me in trouble on more than one occasion because I get into it with students. But I, well, what I like about the older kids is that, you know, they'll say something. I'll say something back and we'll just get into it. Yeah. And usually it's all in good fun. But 
and I can say, you know, I can say rude things and weird things to them. And it just rolls off of them, you know, teenagers. Yeah. When I taught at elementary, oh, my Lord, I told a kid one time, I said, oh, what's wrong? You need a diaper? Jokingly, I was joking with him. Yeah. He went home, told his granny. His granny came in with his daddy and, da, 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 and they all ripped me a new one. And I was like, dude, I was just messing around. <laughs> yeah. Kids are <laughs> so, yeah, it, middle school is where it's at. The kids got to grow a thick skin, right? Sometime. Yeah, right. And, you know, and a lot of kids get my humor. So, you know, it's nice teaching at the older age so I can actually, you know, talk with them. And, you know, a lot of us, especially with the older kids, uh, we share interest in movies. In fact, I had a kid, we were doing a comic book assignment in my sixth grade class a couple months ago. And this kid, I mean, this sixth grader, right? you know, all the kids there, most of the kids, they know Superman and Batman, you know, and they'll, they'll, they'll come... I got my uh, comic posters and movie posters on the wall and they'll be like, Oh, Mr. Tracks, flash, blah, 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 blah. Well, this one kid, we're doing a comic and he goes, Mr. Tracks, have you ever heard of Howard the Duck? And I started laughing. I said, dude, <laughs> wait, I said, you've heard of it. He goes, Oh, I love Howard the Duck. I got all the old comic. I'm like, you're in sixth grade. So then he starts telling me about, and I mean, he's talking Howard. The, he won't talk about any of the main scenes. Like I stay away from the mainstream, Mr. Tracks. All these other kids can talk mainstream, but I like <laughs> Howard the Duck and, um uh drag uh the 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 house of dracula and stuff and i was just yeah, like wow. you're awesome so yeah, that's uh, cool. i got for for a going away gift once uh the corona thing hit us over here i gave him um uh what was it i had an extra second series of the marvel cards right so i said hey man this will keep you busy and we at the time we thought we were just gonna be shut down for two weeks so i said you know what you need something to do for two weeks take this home and have some fun with it <laughs> mm. That's so. Do you take stuff in general? Do you like take stuff in, show them, like you know, show yeah, them cards, yeah. show them toys, and they sort of like it? Because it's hard for my kids. You know, I've got teenagers. Like I've got a, you know, like a um, a seventeen and a, and a fourteen year old, and like, uh, you know, they just. I feel like they don't get the whole. You know, we had cards, we had toys, and and for them, it's like games and video games yeah. which we had as well but i mean not in the right. sense you know games for us was also collecting because you had the cartridges you had the you know well it depends if you had a commodore 64 or something you know you had cassette tapes you had sort of yeah. you there was actually a physical side of collecting video games as well not exactly. just not just the the playing the game side of things that's a whole separate story about you know a whole separate thing about like how the they spent all the money creating really cool artwork for the box. And then you get the game out of the box and it was a piece of trash, you know, but, um, <laughs> but like, you know, do the kids sort of like, do you take stuff in and they go like, do they kind of go like, Oh, I get, you know, action figures or whatever. Or do, are they sort of like, what's going on? Like, uh, well, well the, the, I, when I taught elementary, I used to, ha I, I had a, um, a shelving unit high above my desk. And every month I put a new toy display up there and the elementary kids loved it. You know, they'd be like, Oh, Mr. Tracks, I got Spider-Man and I got, you know, different figures and stuff. And we talked star Wars and all that with the middle school, with the older kids though. Uh, you know, they're, they're too cool for uh, toys anymore. I mean, a couple of them do bring toy like Lego figures and stuff. And uh, I'll be like, Hey, let me say a Lego figure. I don't have this one yet. Do your work or I add them to my collection. <laughs> and, uh, but as far as action figures, very few of them. And if I took them to the middle school, they just get stolen. A lot yeah. of my stuff gets ripped off off of my desk, so I don't yeah. really have anything there I care about. But, like, um, I have uh, a couple of advanced art classes, and I'll bring in um, the trading card blanks. I'll order a bunch of those, you know, uh, with my school funds, and I'll bring in examples, and we'll talk about, you know, like a series, uh, thematics, and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, so each student has to come up with a card set. And actually, you know what? I mean, we're talking cards. Over the years, I've had a couple students – who did such amazing card sets, you know, I'd, I'd say, hey, man, stick around after class. I got to talk to you. And they're like, yeah, what's up, man? And I'll be like, well, um, I really like your card set. You want 20 bucks for it? And they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, you can get paid for your art. So, like, um, I don't know, this is from 2017. It was just a student. She did all these kooky, weird little monster cards. That's really cool. And that was her theme. Oh, I got them back. Do I have them back? Oh, yeah, they're backwards. And this one. She, and uh, towards the end of the series, she goes, Mr. Trax, start drawing with your eyes closed. So I drew a little scribble with my eyes closed. And then she started from my scribble, drawing these weird face monsters and stuff. That's so great. So at the end of the, uh, the class, I was like, hey, Jaleesa, I'll buy that off you. She's like, really? And then I had, uh, I mean, a couple of students over the years have uh, sold me their stuff. And then uh, I had this student, I've known him for, well, six years. And 
every time he's in my class, he gets done with an assignment and be like, Trax, give me some more trading cards. I've got <laughs> probably 150 of his trading cards. Wow, man. So I got a lot of student work. And another great thing I love is, um, you know, I posted that uh, my kids gave me some trading cards for Father's Day. Yeah. Right? Let's see if I can get it right. Let's see. Uh, wow, man. Right Even there, more collection. Yeah. This whole row right here is just my kids since 2015. They'll just be like, hey, dad, we're going to, and we'll, you know, break it up by themes. Eddie's creature feature, Izzy's Minecraft, wow. all sorts of stuff. But That's yeah, tremendous. My, this is my, um, you know, chase cards and sketch cards collection right here. So wow. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty good size. This is one of my favorite um, artists right here. His name is Rack. Uh, he's one of our members, actually, Robert Kraus. Sure. And uh, I'm working on I'm working on my second box. When he's at Comic Cons, all his cards are prints, and it's just a yes. bucket card. Yeah, so I think I will, yes, I do remember. Yeah, I will drop a hundred bucks each Comic Con just on his stuff. And I mean, this box down here is completely full. I bought one of his mystery boxes one year, so. I mean, you can't uh, go wrong for a bucket card, you know. Really, yeah. especially when you're buying it directly from the guy. Exactly. And we, you know, we'll chat and stuff. And now we're, you know, kind of sort of friends on Facebook and stuff. But so there's that. And, oh, yeah. So see, here's my, my horror section here. That's all horror there. And then I've got <laughs> some of these uh, Cthulhu cards. That's from Atron Print right there. Or wow. Atron Mint. Uh, my brother did that one. And this one, this is done with a knife. These are metal cards that the artist drew with a knife. I That's incredible. Wow. Oh, hey, while I got you, you are right here brent scotchmer from australia <laughs> there you are there you go gotcha wow <laughs> well i haven't seen some of those in a long long time yeah oh yeah there's that combo we did together <laughs> here's that pack yeah when are you doing another pack man yeah i uh, time time at the moment i've got oh. probably five or six you know projects on the go yeah, wow you do have a lot already yeah <laughs> yeah clint eastwood yeah. batman um so, like i it's been uh that's, I think it's the, the blessing and the curse at the moment is that I, it's hard to find the time between official stuff. I mean, I do have, I do have things going on that I can't show a lot. I do. Um, have you seen garbage shoot droids that we've been doing? They're like, yes, a, I did see some of those. Yes. Right. So that's an ongoing, that's an ongoing thing. And because it's final art, it takes, uh, it takes a lot longer. And, and okay. uh, there's always official sets in the pipeline. At the moment, I have about three official sets that I have to do that are all lost in the mail somewhere because of the Corona thing. Uh, they were all sh shipped out to me in February and normally to get a package from, you know, there to here, it's two weeks, but it's been three months. Holy crap. Yeah. That sucks. And I, I shipped some trading cards to a guy in uh, New Jersey, which, you know, has, I'm guessing has to go through New York, which was one of the harder hit places. And, and I sent right. him again, should have taken 10 to 14 days, six weeks. It took, Oh, six weeks got him for, he got them which is good because it's original art in there i can't reproduce it it's it's uh yeah so yeah i'm yeah. a bit it's a bit sketchy at the moment where people are asking me for commissions and i'm saying can you wait a month because it's just it's right. every every time i put a stamp on something and send it out in the mail it's just nerve-wracking like knowing whether yeah, it's gonna yeah knowing whether yeah, it's ever no. gonna get there uh, joe reinwald from the cardboard he um i sent uh you know he bought um he bought like I think 10 of my cards from this last series, I did the Marvel miscreants and um, I sent them. He lives in North Carolina and the other guy who bought from me lives in Washington state. Right. I'm I gonna, sent them both. Out. I'm going to insert some of some scans of those cards while you're talking about them here. Cool. So yeah, yeah, cool. Um, I sent, you know, I sent them out on the same day. Bill got his within four days. Boom. Got him. The guy in Washington gets them. I, I messaged Joe the other day. I said, hey, did you get your card yet? He goes, no, still not yet. I'm like, we're coming up on two weeks, man. That's not good. I'm getting nervous. Mm. And then he just got them today. I was like, holy crap, man. So it's like hit or miss. And there's another guy, Mike um, Mike uh, Galagos, the guy from uh, Texas, the one doing the trash bin weirdos. Sure. Um, I said, he's, he's working on a set for me, actually. He, uh, he saw one of, uh, one of my older sets that I did, this monster set. Because he and I got to talking about, you know, mass producing. And I said, well, I can't really mass produce my stuff because I use all trademark images. And I can get away with it if it's just, you know, one of one. And I'm not making a, a – I make five bucks off a card. You know, it's not like I'm making – I don't think they're going to come after me for a $5 Spider-Man card. Sure. Now if I mass produce it. But I had this older set I did four years ago or so. And it's all these 
it's all uh, from uh, anatomy books. And I made all these monsters on these funky backgrounds. So it's like a 12 card set. So I sent him the set because he makes his own cards, right? He's doing it, the trash bin weirdos. And he's like, well, send me the set. I'll work on the back. So he's, I already made the art. He's working on the production end of it. We're going to split the production costs and then split the profits. So that's yeah, great. Pretty fun. So it's now you're, first, um, now you're becoming, a, that's it. right. You're yeah. becoming a publisher as well, which is great. He what, gets. Was, what was the, um, what was the first trading card set you ever collected? Do you remember like as a kid, like oh, yeah. the first time you picked up a yeah. pack of cards? Yep. My, um, it was almost, almost every, my dad was in the Navy, so he would be gone for nine months at a time. One year he was gone for over a year, but every time he was in town, we uh, went from about second grade on up till fifth or fifth. Yeah. Right up to fifth grade. We lived in this one little neighborhood and there was a, you know, a little party store within walking distance. And every time he was home, you know, in between leaves and stuff, like every Friday, you know, he'd walk down to go get beer. And my brother and I would walk down with them and right on the counter there, you know, they got garbage pail kids and everything. And I remember we, he'd be like, get a candy bar, get some garbage pail kids or whatever. And I always pick garbage pail kids. The first uh, uh, set I got was uh, second series. Wow. And uh, Patty Putty's uh, staring at me over there. And I, I went to Catholic school at the time. And I tell you, man, every time you got caught with those things, they got, I mean, the teacher, the nun, the teacher would just take however many you had, didn't matter just start ripping them pieces and chuck them in there. So it was like, you know, passing drugs around. <laughs> that's a hundred percent. And you know what? That's universal because my first, when I collected trading cards, was, I mean, I'm 37. I, so I'm guessing I'm whatever I'm say six or seven years old. So 30 years ago, like I'm, you know, I'm collecting the same garbage gang, which is garbage power kids here. And right. the, the stickers are smaller and, um, and they were banned at my school as well. Um, I, the thing is I was too young really to know whether, whether they were banned because they were gross or because the, the swapping culture, the trading culture amongst the kids was just too frenzied and a kid got stung on a deal. And, and we used to do this thing. I'm not sure if you ever did it, but I mean, we never treated cards with any respect, you know, back then they just, no. you, you know, you got rubber bands on them and everything. And our yep. thing used to be, you could get a card, put it between your fingers and flick it. And whoever's, and if you had cards for trade, or if you wanted a card that somebody else has had, you'd have the card and you'd flick it. And whoever's card landed the furthest got both the cards. Awesome. And that, I've never played that. <laughs> and that was, and that was kind of, I guess it's not trading. It's more gambling, but I mean, that right, was, right. That, that was the whole thing. It was like marbles, right? You know, you get someone throws a yes. marble and if you hit their marble or you knock it out the way or whatever it is, like, you know, you get, and so it was the same thing. And there would, I think, I think that's probably more the cases. There were probably too many tears spilt over oh i didn't have a good throw and i lost all my garbage right. gang stickers and and <laughs> but yeah they, they were a hundred percent i mean like you know i'm easily twelve thousand miles away from you and i mean we had the same thing garbage gang stickers were banned yep. and then later on i found out that you know there was a lot of religious stuff around it you know a lot of the like really kind of heavy duty um church groups and stuff but oh. you know back then goes to show you like what was like considered offensive back then. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> nowadays they're even worse. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so you would, yeah, the same thing. There were these books. I remember my, um, my mom at the, for a while was like a, you know, a, a deep into Christianity and stuff. And she had this book and it was like all the things that are bad for kids. And I wish I had the book because I used to read it because it had awesome pictures of cool stuff in it, even though it was that's telling, right the book was the purpose of the book was to say you shouldn't give this stuff to your kid, but there's like photos of like my pet monster and mad balls and garbage pail kids and all that. And I'm like, I'm looking through the book like it's a shopping catalog, you know? <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Mad balls, baby. Mad balls. That is crazy. Good. Are they, <laughs> are they the originals? No, these are, I wish they were. Those are the, uh, the, the repros from about 10 years ago they released. Right. Oh, no. Yeah. Because again, you know, with mad balls, you know, I mean, the, the, my kids will come down and go, Dad, can I hold that one? I'm like, what's the rule? And, I mean, my kids are awesome about it. If I, when I have figures displayed upstairs, if someone falls off while I'm at work or whatever, whoever's near it knows they grab it, grab the accessories, put it up by my record player. Dad, one of your guys fell. We got it for you. Uh, just <laughs> That's great. Uh, and th there's some toys like um, I let them play with my vintage GoBots, except for a couple of them, because you know uh, they're not going to play with Copter, no way. Sure. Uh, but you know, dive, dive, whatever. He's a five dollar one. But 
the, my most popular toys they play with are my Godzilla toys. Because, and I love it because almost all of them, they're just, you know, one or two pieces moves on them. You, I mean, you can sit yeah. there and beat the hell out of them. Those things are perfectly fine to play with. So the kids yeah. love those. In fact, tomorrow, I, I just got it uh, from a seller. Today, I just got it. King Kong versus God, uh, Godzilla on VHS. So we're going to be watching that tomorrow. They're, they're, I showed them today. I said, hey, this is our summer watch for Friday tomorrow. And they were just like, yes. Do you have like a, because I'm guessing you're like a swap meet, like garage sale guy. Yeah. You love oh, doing it. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, that was my. Oh, I love life. a garage sale. My kids love garage sailing. But uh, right now, there's probably no, there's, yeah. uh, I saw one last weekend. But at this time of year, usually it's tons of them on a weekend and stuff but right yeah. now nothing. do you have like a stockpile of vhs players just in case like you know one yes, breaks and stuff <laughs> yes and i know how to repair them in fact i've got one in this room i've got one in that room with the exercise bike i've got a portable tv with a vcr or player in it for when i go to work on lunch it's down here right now and i've got one upstairs hooked up to our giant you know we got this giant, massive, expensive TV, and my wife's like, that thing still works? I said, hell yes, it does. Yeah. In fact, almost every time I go to an aunt's house or an uncle or one of my friends who, you know, has a parent or an older parent, they're like, Jeff, do you want this VCR? I'm like, yes, I do. Yeah. I had <laughs> that. Uh, players. Yeah. My, my thing was Laserdiscs. You know, like about uh, three years ago, I came across a Laserdisc player at a swap meet uh, with, you know, 20 movies or something, and then that just started. I went crazy on Laserdiscs, and before I sold the collection, I had about 400 Laserdisc movies and I had nine players because the the players broke. And it, the funny thing was, is that it's surprising. Like I would find a Laserdisc player at a swap meet that you could just tell they've just like frisbeed the thing out of the back of their car into the car park, you know, they've, and still works. But the belts in them, the belts and the gears and the, especially the ones that have the auto reverse and stuff always break. And so like my collection was great mainly for the fact that I had nine laser disc players. I had like fail safes on fail safes because the movies are no, you know, there's not a thing on earth that will play that movie. I mean, even, even as recently as a couple of years ago, like a couple of stores were still selling brand new, uh, video, uh, videotape players, but really, yeah, but built specifically for the purpose of converting. And so these, you could buy like a, a VHS player and then it would have like a USB out. And then you could, wow. if you had a capture card or if you had, you know, a way to, to basically rip the VHS, the same as like they did with our vinyl, right? Record players. Right. I mean, over here, as recently as a few years ago, you could buy a vinyl record player that converted straight to MP3. Yeah. we. I remember those several years ago now here, but uh, yeah, I've got one, two, three five record players i've got i don't know how many tape decks i've got for because yeah when it breaks i'm just like you know i'll tinker with it if it's a simple break uh, yeah, a belt that's easy enough to get i know enough yeah. people on the pages you know get a belt from but um uh, one once once in a while it's beyond repair and i'm just like oh wait i've got six more never mind chuck it <laughs> yeah that's right yeah well that's the i mean i love swap meets and garage sales especially for that reason i mean i was a huge retro video game guy like i mean even cards is Plenty of times I've run across boxes of cards. Oh, I can't say how many times, you know, I'll come back from the reuse. We got reuse center here that, I mean, you can buy 11 or you buy um, one, one tape, one VCR tape for um, a quarter, get 10 free. So <laughs> I get 11 movies for a quarter. I'm like, yeah. So for, you know, and uh, my kids hate going there because I will spend, I'll spend well over an hour. So I try to go by myself whenever I can, but you know, if we're out garage selling, I'll be like, look, Every one of you got something at the sales. I didn't get anything. You know where we're going. I'll go buy you an ice cream <laughs> cone at McDonald's, but we're going. We, we, I mean, we had a similar situation where we, um, when I was buying video games, we had this lady in her, she was sort of semi-retired. And what she did during the week was she had a friend who worked um, like sorting things at the tip, at the, at the recycling, you know, the recycling tip. And um, she, would, she would say, like, if you find anything with Sega, Nintendo, PlayStation, anything on it, you just put it to one side. And I mean, the games that I have found, you know, that like she get the lady at the tip holds them aside. It's a little bit of like, you know, a bit of beer money for, for her. You know, she's selling them to the swap meat seller for a buck a piece. And then right. that swap meat seller is selling them to me for like five bucks a piece. 
and I'm still like killing it. You know, sometimes I'm picking up like super rare items that could be worth 20, 50, a hundred, you know, dollars. So yeah, we had, I had like sort of fingers, you know, sort of going across all the tips and the roadside collections. So we have like, um, I'm not sure if you have it, but like you could call the, call the Shire, call the town. Um, and you could say like, I've got junk to put out. Like I've got, you know, whatever it might be old furniture an old fridge that doesn't work, you know, just, just junk, you know, trash, but stuff that's too big for your weekly bin. And, um, and then, yeah. And then, so they would either give you a, a permit and then the stuff would sit out on the curb for like a week and then a truck would come take it away. Or the entire suburb would have like, uh, like a, they would get a flyer in the mailbox to say like, we are going to be collecting anything that you don't want on the whatever 30 days from now. And That's then awesome. for the next 30 days, it's like every it's walking down every street in the suburb is like your own private free garage sale. I mean, oh. you know, like it's, it's pretty nasty. Some of the stuff, you know, like old suitcases full of used underwear or something disgusting, you know, but um, every now and then, you know, every now and then, like uh, I had a guy who would chase stuff for me, who was a postie. Uh, a postman and he would um you know he would go like as he was doing his route you know he'd be putting along and then he would see like a box and the box had like a super nintendo with like 30 games in it that somebody was just like ah it's trash it's been sitting in my cupboard for 25 years (laughs) trash and so he would like he would get all that stuff and he would save it up and then like twice a year he would call me and go come over and i would buy like 200 consoles and like a thousand games off of him all in one hit and you know and then it was up for me to test it and check it and clean it and you know all kinds i I did arcade games as well and i mean i've pulled apart arcade machines and found like you know tokens and coins that are stuck to the wood with like 20 year old coca-cola it's never coming (laughs) out ever and it's 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 so gross but you know it's part of the restoration Oh yeah! Oh, I, I I saw that on your you posted a year or so ago one of your uh, cabinets that you restored. I was just like, I wish we had that kind of space to have old video games. My, uh, in fact, my kids, my buddy got me a uh, a Nintendo one of the Nintendo plug and plays with forty games in it for my birthday sure. a couple yep. years ago. And my uh, we we don't we're, we're not big on video games in our family. So when I plugged that sucker in, my kids had never. They had, they had a Wii that someone had handed them down and they kind of played it on and off. But when I plugged that sucker in, they were just like, so what's this? And I was like, this is what we call Super Mario Brothers. And they were just met. They're like, this is so cool. I'm like, exactly. So my kids don't even know what, you know, modern video games look like because we don't have anything. So right. my students are like, Mr. Tracks, we're playing Fortnite, blah, blah, you know, whatever the hot games are. They're like, what are you playing? I'm like, uh, Super Mario Brothers and Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well they, I, I guess what's old habits you know like if that's what you know then that's what you know i mean you put you know if my kid my kid puts like a, a playstation 4 in my hands i don't know what to do with it really you know like i i mean i could figure it out if i had to it, you know car racing games car racing games are pretty universal i could play a car racing game on anything but but um when it comes to like you know she's playing star wars battlefront and oh, i'm just like yes. The cool thing about it is, is I'll just sit there and watch it like watching a movie. I'll just watch someone play Battlefront just like I'm watching a movie, just watch them try and get through. But like, like oh, they <laughs> give me the remote, you know, like I'm like, nah, nah, I'll, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I'll pass on it. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, when the first Halo came out once, however long ago that was. My, you know, my buddy, my buddies, uh, my buddies, of, most of the people that I'm friends with, they're all gamers. Somehow mm. I fell through the crack. I mean, we're talking, you know, Dungeon, uh, Dungeon Dragons, I played with them and stuff. But, they, you know, I mean, if it's a game, board game, uh, role play game, uh, video game, most of them are into it, right? And so they get the Halo, right? You know, and they're like, hey, Jeff, come on over, man. We're, we're playing Halo. And I was like, yeah, okay, why not? I'll come over. You got beer and whatnot. So I'm sitting there and they're like, all right, here, just, you know, and I'm, and I'm standing there just getting shot. So I was like, wait a minute, you pricks just needed target practice. <laughs> <laughs> I just got taken apart. <laughs> Well, look, we're coming up on nearly 40 minutes already. That went quick, didn't it? That's all, I know. Seriously, man. Like, so, <laughs> so the last thing I want to talk about is yeah. to get you to like, tell us a bit about the collage cards that you do because, and sure. you know what, to be honest, I can't even remember how, do you even remember how you got onto the cardboard? How did we sort of connect originally? I have no idea. I just remember you invited me and the only way I can think, and here's the thing. 
at oh wait you know what at the time i think i was posting on my own webs on the my facebook page strange cobwebs but i mean i was looking at um I, in fact i have it listed here here's a i call it crap i made <laughs> and um my earliest cards i'm like these suck man I mean, all, all I did on my earliest cards was um, I cut out the character and put them on a background. I'm like, dude, these blow. <laughs> the only reason I kept it is because I made an entire JSA set. And the Justice Society of America is my all-time favorite superhero group. Right. But, um, you know, over the years, it, 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 uh, so from each set that I make, I always save one or two. So, and then, you know, I started branching out and I was like, okay, so one, one character on a background, that's useless. And uh, so I was like, I got to add, a, you know, a couple more things because for the longest time I did. Oh, wait. Oh, here it is. I did. Uh, in fact, I'm going to talk to this that dude, Mike, oh. about um, make, turning some of these into cards. But I've been a collage artist since uh, college when a professor of mine was like, you know, uh, you're going to do a series of drawings, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, I'm not very good at drawing. He goes, you like collage? And I was like, well, I've done it once or twice. He goes, collage will count. You can do collages tracks. And I was like, OK. I got so into it. And that was in like, I want to say 1998, 99. I never turned back. I was like, sweet. I suck at drawing. I'll just do this. So. I used to do, these are like eight and a half by tens, these uh, older collage. I mean, it's 2014. So, wow. you know, and on the bigger space, I've got more, you know, I've got more space to play with and add more details. In fact, I just showed my daughter this one today. She's 11 now, and she was just under one right there in the <laughs> robot body. So, um, you know, and I, I was doing that for the longest time. And then I was, I can't remember where I was. Um, but I, I, oh, I was at a comic con. I was at a comic con and I saw, you know, a sketch card. So, you know, before the whole sketch card boom and stuff. So this would have been, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine years ago. And, you know, I'm just walking along the artist gallery and I see this guy with, you know, a thing of trading cards. I was like, oh yeah, I'll get some. I was like, wait a minute. These aren't trading cards. He goes, oh no, I draw these on like trading card size. And I was like, trading card size. He goes, yeah, it's called a sketch card. And I, you know, I picked up a couple of them. It was only like two bucks at the time. No, um, that's all right. I, uh, I, uh, I, probably about eight or nine years ago, I, uh, found, you know, ran into an artist at a comic convention and, uh, he, he was doing his own sketch cards. I didn't even know what they were. I didn't know that people made art, you know, that small yeah. to sell. Yeah. And so I was like, huh, I wonder if I did my collages smaller. I could try that. And then, um, cause that's I the joined... thing I really want to know is like, you put the most absurd things together <laughs> And you got to wonder like, what's going through this guy's mind? Like, cause you just <laughs> do, you, do you cut out, do you kind of cut out a, like lots and lots of different things and then just play with them and see what works? Or do you yeah. already kind yeah. of, you know, do you sort of piece I, it together in your head? I piece it together as I go. So here is, I've got these one, one, four crates here. And uh, like this one is full of old comic books. Mostly um, what I do for this two series that I've been doing are the old Marvel Universe and the DC Who's Who comics. Right. And so like for the Marvel one, I flipped through and I just went for the ridiculous villains and stuff. So I cut out a bunch of those. And then I also use, just a second here, I've got tons of, I love science books. Science books have some of the, and Guinness Book of World Records stuff. Just if it's, mm. so these old black and whites, let's see here, these yeah. old black and white time life books. Yeah. I've got tons of those and that's mostly what I use. So what I do is I, I basically, if it makes me laugh or if the composition just like, some, sometimes, you know, it'll take me an hour just to make one stupid call. I think you're, wherever you are in your house, it might be a really weak signal. Second, let me come back this way. No, that's okay. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah the, so, the router's so, above my head. In, in this room here, the router's above my head. Sorry, yeah. No, so, you were saying, so you get these old uh, Time Life and uh, Guinness World Records books, right? Right. I just, you know, just ran, you know, the more pictures, the better. And so I'll cut out Captain America. And then uh, I've really gotten into, with the last two series, with the the talking bubbles, you know, where, um, like, yeah. uh, the emperor was going, huh, 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 huh. And the yeah. other guy goes, you're an idiot or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, and the, the guys who have been buying them really responded to those. So I went, I think almost every card in this last series just about had a talking bubble of, uh, and at first when I did the bubbles, I tried to find the bubble from an actual comic, but then I was running into the problem of, but I need one where someone's saying something about waffles. And then my daughter goes, well, why don't you just draw your own bubble? And I was like, well, leave it to the 11-year-old to solve my problem. Yes, <laughs> I will just do my own comic book bubble. So then I just started, you know, whatever phrase came into my head to make me laugh. Yeah. Um, 
and then, you know, sometimes I'll run it by my wife. I'll be like, should the joke go like this or this? And then, you know, I, before I glue it all together, um, I'll ask one of the kids. I always ask the kids. The kids, if the, if one of my kids can get the joke, then anybody else will get the joke. So, sure. Yeah. You know, if I have to explain it too much, and sometimes they need an explanation, but if I have to overly explain it, then, you know, I won't use those bubbles. But as far as, you know, putting these 10 things together, I, uh, sometimes I'll have an idea like, oh, the emperor's evil. So the emperor card that I did where he's holding the pink blobby things, mm. the picture of the person behind him was um, David Berkowitz, the guy, the son of Sam who heard the dog talking to him in his mind when he <laughs> right. did all his killings. So that eye looking out from the, the emperor is David Berkowitz. So instead of the dog talking to him, it's the emperor talking to him, telling him to, you know, do what he did. So, oh, so there's, sometimes, a, there's a method behind it. There is, there is. And, uh, or I'll take, you know, um, let's say I'm looking at someone like, um, like, especially with superheroes, if they're wearing green and yellow, then I don't want any green or yellow in the background or in the objects around them. I For want, sure. you know, colors to offset and stuff. Um, sometimes I'll just, you know, a character will be in a certain pose and I'll be like, you know what? A chicken drumstick would fit perfectly in that hand now. And that's the hard part sometimes when my mind says it's gotta be a chicken drumstick. So I'm flipping through books, cookbooks. Sometimes my wife's like, I, I used one of her cookbooks once and she goes, you made a Xerox of that right? I was like, yeah, 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 Xerox. I was going to say like, yeah, do you sort of like find the perfect reference, but it's not the correct size. So then you have to Xerox it, shrink it down. Very rarely. Usually, um, I like to I like to not use Xeroxes when I can. I like to use the actual. That way, when you get the card, all the pieces are original from some book or a magazine or something. So Once when somebody a gets a Marvel character cut out and it's in your collage card, nine times out of ten, that's the actual that's original the character from the. And if I can't make them work, I don't use them on the card. Like uh, I had one, I really wanted to use them, but I, he was too big, so I just found a smaller picture of him in a different position. It was the wizard. And so I just did a whole new different car, but I really wanted to do the wizard. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, with the characters, it's always a straight up. Um, there was, um, uh, who was it? Joe, a couple, Joe Reinwald, a couple years ago, commissioned me for a Lando Calrissian piece. And I had no Lando stuff in all my Star Wars stuff. So I was like, ah, it kills me. I got to go do, you know, print it off the internet. But, you know, when, it, when I'm making whatever the heck I want, you know, I can just choose to, you know, okay, I'll just work with. Oh, and sometimes I'll do like a challenge. I'll say, I won't even look in the books. I'll just grab three or four of those books, just random books and sure. the character. And I can only use stuff from those books or sometimes even just one book. And I'll be like, all right, I can only use this book. See if it works. You know, it's just some stupid challenge for myself. Yeah, it, that's all. I mean, they're, they're, it's so interesting to me and probably part of why, you know, sort of I, I started this sort of, back and forth with you the connection there because it's just a type of artwork that you just and I mean you're talking to someone who talks with artists all day long I mean you just don't see that kind of art anymore especially since it's you know it's composite it's like it's it's pieces that already exist but it's right. it's um but you're sort of got your own spin on it and, and they're kind of absurd they're kind of you know they they're not designed to make sense. And so they kind of get your head yes. scratching a little bit on it. So yeah, we're really like amazingly interesting. And for the people who are watching this, I mean, if you, you should really check out strange cobwebs, Jeff tracks, his collage cards, they're amazing. Definitely Thank worth you. more, definitely worth more than the $5 you're going to pay. Uh, and hopefully we can get that price up there, get that price up a little bit for you if we can. Um, you know what? I was, I was telling some one of my buddies was like, dude, you only charge five bucks a card. I said, well, here's the thing. I did it. I did do a comic convention about three years ago. I made 300 cards. Okay. I cranked out 300 cards in about two months to get to this comic con cost me 200 bucks for the table all weekend. I made $10. Yeah. I tell you the wind was take. I was like, yeah, but I was sandwiched between two really good artists. Yeah. One of which was a walking dead artist. And the other one was a universal monsters. So, you know, people are drawn to them and then they see my dinky little cards there. They're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> but, right. um, but, and I, and I love putting, um, uh, bonus cards in. I, uh, with every order, um, yes, Joe or Bill or, uh, Mike, I put in, uh, I do googly eye cards and, sure. um, that's all those. They're uh, great. Who, oh my gosh. Who was that? Uh, Richard Phelps was the one, yes. the one who got me started on it. He, uh, you know, I did his white zombie, uh, RJF designs. Set. Yep. And when he sent me, my my set of it there was a tron card with googly eyes on it and i thought oh my god i've been throwing away and giving away my doubles for years 
So now before I get rid of, like when I broke these boxes open, you know, I, I got the Stargate set, put the set together. Then I went through all the doubles for good googly eye cards for the future. And then sure. all the rest, I'm just going to drop off at the Goodwill or whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, I tell people when I when I list, every order comes with bonus. And I'm also working on new scratch cards where like the background is metallic and it's scratched into black paints. Sure. And uh, it, it's got a really cool 3D look to it. So. Yeah, man, you're yeah. really you're really um sort of changing the way you know that some of the the collectors are looking at cards, especially the ones who are in contact with us on the Facebook page called the Cardboard. Um, it's a side of trading cards you just don't see, and and um you know I think you I think you found a, a, the perfect little pocket there that um you just you just can't even uh, I don't even think you could imitate it if you really wanted to. So um so look, man, well, look, okay. yeah, Wait, real quick, Joe Reinwald, one of our members. He has more cards of mine than I do. He's got a whole page. He's got his own website with his card collection, and I've got my own page, like, outlined on it with a little write-up. Yeah. I looked, I was like, holy crap. He's got more of my own crap than I do. <laughs> so it's in, it's, in his, it's in Joe's best interest that you get more exposure because he needs – he's sitting on a retirement plan there for some time. 20 years from now right he's playing the long game <laughs> <laughs> well jeff thanks man thanks so much for like oh, coming man, on board and that's awesome. you know this is uh, this is only going to be hopefully the first of a, a few we want to uh, you know dive a little bit deeper into something maybe even um look at you know put together two or three sets i'm doing this with uh, chris tansky uh, uh very soon who chris uh works for fright rags the t-shirt company or the the horror hey, merch hey, company so he's also also another crazy trading card guy i'm going to be talking to him next week looking awesome. at sort of our favorite you know pick three sets that you loved as a kid and and sort of go through them so i want to do the same thing with you because i'm sure that you're you kind of got a quir quirky look at <laughs> things and and if you are uh, you know, if you come across any sort of strange boxes or strange sets and that, just make a little note to, to let me know that you're, uh, that you found something really cool and you want to have a talk about it and show some off. Cool. So again, oh, th I got some. thanks so much, man, for doing this for us. All that right, was man. quick and easy and it went really fast. It seems like to that me. So, um, and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this again really, really soon. Yeah, we will. Next time I'm bringing some beer to the party too, man. Sure. Yeah. I can. <laughs> well, it's only, it's nine thirty AM here, but you know what? I'll crack a beer for you anyway. Why not? What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cheers, man. All right, man. Take care. All Bye. right. So there it is. My chat with Jeff Trax, super collector. Hopefully not my last chat with him as well. I think we've only just scratched the surface of his collection. I have a giveaway. Uh, some packs of trading cards which I'm happy to ship anywhere in the world. All you need to do is answer the question in the show notes below and uh, email that through. I will enter all the names into a random name gener uh, generator um, on the date stated and then uh, we'll pick a winner and I will ship those out. So be sure to enter those. Uh, free is always good. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please uh, hang around, subscribe and um, stick around for the next one. All right. Thank you.